Hi y'all, I'm Carrie. I have the Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt. Today I'm going to show you how to make some very basic Easter magnets. So the first thing I like to do is create a frame that is the size of the material for my reference and placing my designs. Now, like I said, what I will be using is the walnut ply sheets from Xtool. They state that their size is 12 by 12, but as anyone who works with wood knows, the measurements are usually a tiny bit off. So when I create my square for frame of reference, I like to go ahead and make it just a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna make mine 11.75 and I need to unlock this so that I can make my other sides the same. And then I'll go ahead and lock it. What we're going to do is we're going to open up our art library and then we are going to pick our designs. And as you see in my art library, I already have one that is set for Easter and I have all these cute little bunnies. So we're just going to go ahead and pick our bunnies and place them. And I'm gonna start with putting them right here. And as you can see, my little tail is not attached or grouped to my bunny. So I'll have to make sure that I pay attention to that. Then we are going to insert all of our other little bunnies. Okay, so since my um, since I've used these before, all of my settings are already pretty much set for them. So if you can see, my cuts are the black lines, and they are set to six speed um, and fifty two power. And then the red ones are going to be my engraved lines. Um. Let me ungroup one of these so that you can see it. Okay, um, so these little ear pieces are gonna be lines because I'm going to paint inside those later and I don't want them completely etched out. So those are set to 8580. And then my actual engrave areas, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so that you can see. Those will be fully engraved because I'm not going to color those in. Those are set to 8480 as, or 8480, um, and those will be actually just filled in engraved. So now that we have all of our bunnies put on and set, remember I said that these needed to be moved because I want bunny tails that I will paint white and then glue onto the backs of the bunnies. You could also make this the front of a bunny if you wanted instead of, and then just get rid of the, the bunny tail. And we need to move this one off as well. And then I wanna make sure I regroup this because I ungrouped it to show you. Okay, so now that we have all our little separate pieces out, I am a waste not, want not person when it comes to wood because wood is a precious commodity. So I will position all of my little bunnies as close to the edge as I can. And I am going to flip them so that I can position them closer and waste as little material as possible. Also going to do on this one is I am going to add a name in here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna go over here to our text and um, let's click on there. And I am going to use my grandson's name, which is Micah. And then I am going to engrave that. So I'm gonna choose the number one. Oops, I need to select it first. Choose number one. And then I'm gonna make sure that it fits inside my bunny carefully. And it looks like it's just a tad too big. So I'm gonna make that just the three, the point three. And if you like, you can make these skewed or curved or however you want to fit inside the bunny. So I do like mine centered. So I am gonna go ahead and um, select my little bunny. And then I am going to go right up here and align it along the vertical centers so that it is completely lined up. So I rearranged my bunnies just a little bit more to make sure that I was not wasting any space. So I'm going to go ahead and move this up just so we have an idea of how this works. Okay, so you're gonna go up here at the top to preview and we're gonna go ahead and make it just a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. 
Okay, so we're going to hit play and see what is going on. Okay, so right now we see that the outlines of the bunnies are being done first. That's not good because if you do cut the outline first, then sometimes your material will move just a little bit and your engravings or your lines will be off. So what we wanna do is we're gonna say okay and go back down into our workspace and we're going to take that cut line and we're going to move it down. Then we're going to hit play, not okay. And you can see that it does our engrave lines and our, or our score lines and our engravings prior to doing the cutouts, which is exactly what we want. We want the cutouts to be the very last. So we're gonna say okay. And now our settings and our order of work is all ready to go. So I do have the Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt with the extension and the full Xtool enclosure with the extension as well. As you can see, I have added some lights inside my enclosure. Okay, so for our materials we're gonna to use today, we are going to use the Walnut Xtool Ply, the 12 by 12. We are going to use the Xtool Magnets with the adhesive backing. And then we are going to use various paint pens, which I have uh, put some on a piece of scrap so you can see what it does. Okay, as you can see, I've gone ahead and put my ply down on my honeycomb using the X-Tool magnets to secure it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my module up to approximately the middle area of where I'll be working. And then I am going to use the focus tool to make sure that my material and my laser are aligned for focus and they are. So don't forget to remove or pull the foot back up. So let's go ahead and line it up, double check, make sure we're not gonna hit that magnet and put it on the corner. Okay, so now we're aligned and it's time to go ahead and turn on our air assist and our exhaust. We are going to go ahead and open up our file and we are opening up the Easter magnets. Okay, and then I am going to zoom in so you guys can see what we're working on. All right, as you can see, I still have my material outline, but once I was finished designing, I went ahead and sh uh, shrunk my material frame to fit my items so that way I can see where my actual cuts will be. If I was running a circle, I would probably have left it to the entire outline of the circle. As you can see, the output is still on for that so that when we do hit frame, it's going to show us exactly where our cuts are gonna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit frame. And that is perfect because that is where our material needs to be. Okay, so now that we have framed our material, we're gonna go ahead and close our lid so that we are all protected. Then we are gonna go over here and we are going to hit start. And it is going to start working for us. Okay, now that our job is ended and I have given it a couple minutes to air out any smoke, we're gonna go ahead and open up our closure and move our module out of the way and as you can see we have some really good cut throughs you can just pop them down okay now that we have pulled off all of our pieces and lined them up you'll notice that my Kaler has a little bit of char above the name and so all I'm gonna do with that is I'm going to clean it up with a baby wipe Okay, now that all of my pieces and my bunny ears are painted, it's time to go ahead and glue our pieces on. I forgot to list it in our items, in our supply items, but I use this clear Gorilla Glue pen. Okay, now that our little bunnies are painted and glued, we're gonna go ahead and apply our magnets on the back. There you go, super easy beginner Easter magnets.